Good morning. Happy bonus stream day. <laughs> How's it going? So I just had to do this. I had to do uh, an impromptu stream because I got my Sonoff minis last night. Check it out. Let me get this camera worked out. It's always so much fun. This got to be, yes. Hey, Bobby. How's it going? Both Bobbies and Aza. How's it going, guys? Yeah, I just, uh, just got these yesterday and I went ahead and, and took them apart and did the DIY stuff and uh, and now it's time to just do a live stream and walk through some of the some of the different parts with you I figured you want to know and I don't want to wait <laughs> what is the mini somebody says great I'm scared he's going to blow himself up <laughs> nothing's connected here this is this nothing's connected to anything these are just free rolling. Filling in for Frank. No, I'm going to be done before Frank comes on. That's the plan. Frank will be on in about 45 minutes. I've got about a half hour before I've got to go. So <clears throat> an off schedule stream. How's it going, Glenn? Dimitri, what is, so somebody said, what's the mini? A couple of people said, what's the mini? Just got done flashing some, ooh, Tekken plugs with Tuya Convert and then added Flash ESP. Love it. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, he's coming on, he said. Oh, he's not going to come. Oh, I didn't know he wasn't going to do it today. Well, I guess that's a little bit uh fortuitous i suppose i guess we we still get a stream i didn't even know that uh the new shade video thanks poor video connection uh oh good time for streaming in the uk will it tasmoda it sure will it sure will so to get to the point here this i know it's kind of overexposed cuz it's white and it's bright sorry anyways this is the sonoff mini it is small that's why it's called the mini. Where's my calipers? Ah, anyways, I think these, I think it's about a, that's about a half inch. So this thing is less than two inches by two inches. Oops, right there. Less than two inches by two inches. It is definitely small, definitely small. Uh, it works like the basic, basically. But what they really did the middle of the shade video and got the notification. <laughs> yeah, I thought about that last night too. I was like, oh yeah, that's right. I scheduled a video to come out. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> by Dollar Shave Club. Look at that dome. <laughs> how's it going? Uh, hey, C. Gray, how's it going? That's what the ladies say. Uh, <clears throat> oh, somebody just subscribed or something. What was that? Let's see. Oh yeah, we should probably do, let's do this. Unicorns. All right, so the basic, let's talk, or the mini, let's talk about the mini. So this is the Sonoff Mini. Uh, oh, thank you, 42.6 millimeters, thank you. <laughs> it's the small one. Yeah, that's why they call it the mini. Size versus the Shelly. Let me see. Shelly is smaller. The Shelly is smaller. This is a Shelly 2, and it's smaller in every dimension. It's smaller on the sides, it's smaller front to back, it's, it's smaller on height, and this one's got, oh sorry, this one's got two relays. How do they do this with the switches? Oh yeah, switch one, switch two, yeah. Line, switch one, switch two, yeah. So this is what I think they're competing with. I think Shelly has upped the game for everybody. So I think it's meant to compete with the older Shelly. Yeah, they're just way behind. Hopefully they'll be able to stick another relay in here. <clears throat> so what it's got is neutral in, another neutral in for some reason, I don't understand. Line in, line out. So that's the one circuit that goes out. And then they give you two connections here to connect up a switch. So this is a big deal. This is really cool for Sonoff. This is something that Shelly's been doing for a while and BH and Ofri already had as well, but this is, um, well, sort of, because they have the pins accessible. <clears throat> but this, they finally gave us two con uh, connections to be able to set up a, a external switch. So for a long time, we were doing GPIO 14, I uh, hate these videos, have like 20 of the Sonoff Basics in a drawer, nothing to do with them. <laughs> you can do stuff with them. They're still good. They're still good. <clears throat> oh, pass through. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. So 
Anyways, now we can just connect to these and, uh, and put an external switch on it. Let me get to the meat of this, okay? Here's the insides. I took it apart. I took it apart, did the insides. Of it, took a different one apart. If you want to do DIY mode, that's funny, I already lost the jumper. It was here a minute ago. If you want to do DIY mode, which you should probably in this case for sure, um, these are the pins for DIY mode, the DIY mode jumper. This is the push button. It's connected to GPIO zero, 10 amp relay. This is the interesting side, I think. You can get a look at the soldering and the, and the mains connection stuff here. It looks okay. I mean, it's so short. These, these are so small. And when they're inside this case, lost everything this morning. I'm totally messed up. But when they're inside, here it is. When they're inside this case, uh, you're not going to get in, in contact with those at all. So fortunately, this is so small. Unlike the old Sonoff Basics, you don't need to like wrap it in electrical tape and try and stuff it in there. Um, <clears throat> we thank IT. That's right. <laughs> John. So what we see back here, I was hunting and hunting and hunting for extra GPIO pins. All right. Somebody else subscribed. Let's do this one. I was hunting and hunting and hunting for extra GPIO pins and they just are not there. This one is 16, so you could use that for something if you want to, but the problem is there's no power. There's no 3 volt power except you can see what I did here. I <laughs> this was kind of a funny story. I did DIY mode. I put uh Tasmoda, well I tried to put Tasmoda on there. They've got a limitation now. When you when you go to flash this through DIY mode, you can't have a bin file that's bigger than 500k. So sonoff.bin is 508k. So it doesn't fit. So it will tell you, give you a message. And I recorded this, so there'll be a regular video about this. Yeah, you love funny stories. So um, I recorded this, so you, you'll get a video about it very, very soon. Uh, I have all the footage from last night. I just, um, as soon as I got into them, I started recording. Anyways, what I did then, I said, well, if if it's um, not going to take sonoff.bin because it's too big, then what would be the logical thing to do? Well, the logical thing to do would be to to load sonoff minimal on there, right? Wrong. Don't do not do that. <laughs> I did it before I read the instructions on the Tasmoda website that said, don't flash this thing with sonoff minimal. Um, and I, I don't know all the details of what happens, but I can tell you once I flashed it with sonoff minimal, I completely lost contact with it. There was no, it was not broadcasting in AP mode. Um, I couldn't obviously go back to EWE link or the DIY mode. None of that would work anymore. It was just gone. So it was, it was stuck with a firmware that I couldn't connect to in any way. So I did the only thing I could do, which was hunt down on the board, the RX and TX pins. I knew they had to be here somewhere. They certainly aren't accessible or uh, easy to get to like they used to be with the basic. You know, we used to have those nice headers and you could put, put your wires through there, your jumper wires through there, and it was beautiful. Not anymore. We've got tiny little pads that don't even have any solder on them. I had to drop a little bit of solder on them and then just stick a couple of wires, just barely stick those wires to them. But with that, this one's RX, the, the green is RX, the blue is TX, then three volts and ground. And with the, with those wires on there, I was able to uh, connect it to my um, FTVI adapter and flash it the good old fashioned way. Okay. You can, you have to hold down, you have to hold down this button, which is GPIO zero to do that. So in this particular case, now when we did the Sonoff Basic, when I did that Sonoff Basic R3, just a week ago or whatever, um, I would have probably said it's going to be easier to just get your FTDI adapter if you've got one of these and you're and you're familiar enough with doing that. Uh, it, it's just going to be easy to connect these to the the right pins and flash it the old fashioned way. That's going to be faster and easier than uh, doing it the DIY mode method. That is not the case with the mini. With the mini, we we really this you don't want to do this if you can help it, right? You're certainly risking a lot of of uh, 
stuff there by sticking a soldering iron where there's that many tiny little contacts close by. I mean, look how close you are to the chip. If you're not real steady, you could you could ruin it. So I'm not going to recommend that you flash this one the old-fashioned way unless you get in a situation like me where you brick it. <laughs> so this one, definitely the way to do it is the DIY mode. All right, just joined. How much is this mini? It's $8.50. $8.50 compared to $5 for the basic. But I tell you what, for the hassle that we save with this, it's I think it's probably worth it because you don't have to hunt down a, you know different contacts. Uh, it's certainly easier to fit in a switch box if that's your purpose. The other thing to, to remember too, a lot of us, a lot of you guys, not me so much, but a lot of us <clears throat> have uh, switches that don't have a neutral in your wall right? And that's been plaguing us for as long as I've been doing this, a couple of years that people have been saying, well, I, I don't have a neutral in my switch box. How do I use a Sonoff Basic as a light switch? Um, in, in that case, you really couldn't put it in your, in your switch box. And this you still can't also put in your switch box, but you can put this in your ceiling where your lights are. And the problem, or the problem, the solution is you just run these two wires, uh, the two wires that go to your switch, from these two switch connections here. So this will go out to your switch that goes down to your wall. This will be up in the ceiling or wherever your lights or whatever is. And then you can just connect up the line and the neutral and the load off of this. So I think this is answering that um, request for something that we could you know, put in the wall. And what can you do if you don't have a neutral? You put this in the ceiling. So I definitely think this is an upgrade over the basic. Definitely think I, this is upgrade over the basic. And if I was just gonna, if I was gonna stick to something from Sonoff for the rest of my light switch projects, this would be it. Um, that's not saying I think it's better than the Shelly because two relays packed in this plus UL listing, which matters to us in the US. Um, it, plus the software is already ready to go. You can flash it or you can just use theirs and shut it off from the internet and use MQTT. I mean, there's just a lot of benefits to this. I also really like that BH on Ofri. I mean, I do, I did two videos about it because for that reason, cause I like it. I think it's, I like the way that device is, um, set up to work for what we like to do with things. So, uh, I don't know. I would probably put Shelly as number one, BH on Ofri number two, maybe Sonoff Mini as number three as far as my choices, but there's definitely some applications for this. I'm going to use this. Um, it's a lot cheaper. That's the reason to buy it more than anything else. This is 30 bucks. If you buy one of these from Amazon in the US, it's $29. You can buy it directly from Shelly for a little less, but then you pay shipping and it's almost the same. I think you end up with like $27. So these are not cheap. And uh, the BH on Ofri, uh, is about 20, I believe, because it's like 17 euros or something, I think. Man, no, it's 15 euros, so that only ends up being about $17, something like that. So the BH on Ofri is cheaper. I really want to build my own BH on Ofri's and see how that goes. Um, but anyways, these are 850. 850. That's pretty good. I mean, that that's not as cheap as the basic, but for what you are able to do with the switch, this is pretty good. Now, what what I would like to be able to do with this that I can't is add, <clears throat> excuse me, add some kind of sensors, add a motion sensor, add a temperature sensor, something. And unfortunately you just can't. And the reason is you, you can access GPIO 16, which is this guy right here. This is 16. This is ground. So you can access, can you see those? Okay. Not really. Can you? Uh, yeah, what's the best way to look at it there? I guess that's the best way to look at it. The one on the outside here is ground and the inner one is GPIO 16. So you could connect something to those. The problem is there's no power. There's no three volts except back here. So you wouldn't be able to do that. Hey, Frank, how's it going? So I didn't know you weren't streaming. I was, I'm just popping on for a quick, let's look at the insides of a Sonoff Mini. I didn't know you weren't streaming today, my friend. You're on what? BH on Ofri, Jerry. Have you not seen the BH on Ofri? Oh, man. What lights in the ceiling have line neutral ground and a traveler? I don't see how you could get constant power and to the mini and still send a switch wire back. Am I missing something? Well, Ryan, I think the lights, <clears throat> they have back one out. You know, bummer. Trying, typing just to write something and be on the stream. 
Okay. <laughs> Thanks. So Ryan, let's answer your question. The light, the, the lights in the ceiling, what, what a lot of people have, not so much in the U S this seems to be the thing that people have in Europe more than we have it here, or maybe in other places too, central South America, et cetera. But we don't have this so much in the U S In the U S typically our, our, uh, line and neutral go into the switch box. The, uh, the neutral keeps on going. Well, no, sorry. Yeah. The neutral keeps on going. Right. And then we switch the line and we switch it at the switch and then those two keep on going. Okay. So if we want to hook up a Sonoff basic, we can tap into the neutrals. We can tap into the line and then we send the out from the Sonoff out to the switch. But in, in a lot of other places, what they have is the switch box just has two wires that come from up above, just from the light. And those are really just the, I guess they're just the line. They're just the switch leg, right? Line and switch leg, I guess. I don't know how you want to name it, but <clears throat> that's what comes in is just those two wires. You don't have neutral anywhere. Just two wires come in and a switch. So when people open up the, those switches and they, those switch boxes and they want to put a switch, a, a Sonoff or something like this in there, they're, they're screwed. They can't. So up in the ceiling is where all the neutrals are tied together. And you've got um, like a hot going to the, might miss him. <laughs> um, you've got the light up in the ceiling has hot going to it. And then the other side of it goes down to the switch with, along with the other neutral. Does that make sense? I don't know. That was probably a horrible explanation. <clears throat> In the U.S., too, the building con uh, contractors try to save on every inch of copper wire. I have a single switch where I have all the wires at the outlet and the switch box, only two wires. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. I appreciate the explanation. Okay, good. <clears throat> yeah, you, you probably won't find that in the U.S., Ryan. You, you probably won't. Um, it seems to be something that, that the people in, the, in Europe and stuff deal with that we don't. But <clears throat> anyways, this, this is uh, – it's, it's a good device. It's a good device. Definitely, I think um, – has a place in our DIY smart home because we can, I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it and I'm going to use it like I would a Shelly one. Um, I slid the Shelly one, but you can't see it or Shelly two. I'm going to use it like I would a Shelly one, which is, um, you know, you can use it in a three way setup pretty easily. Um, you can use it with your existing switches very easily, you know, for the wives who don't want to see a different kind of, of, uh, switch on the wall. You can hide this thing behind everything else. And it's actually pretty, pretty well built and pretty well uh, insulated. One uh, thing I liked about it too, is these connectors are different. They're still not as great as I would like them to be, I think, but they definitely made some changes. This, I don't know if you can see that thing moving, but the way it works now, instead of pressing down with just a little piece of tin that kind of smashes the wire. This actually has a mechanism where this, this bottom part rises. So you're, you're pinching it this way instead of just kind of pressing down on it. So that's I, hopefully even better uh, and more secure of a connection. So I, I think this is an improvement. I think the connections are an improvement. I still, what I really want to see is the, um, you know, on the back of a receptacle where you, you have the, <clears throat> since most of us have solid copper wire, in the, in the walls, right? So they have these connections on the back of most uh, outlets and light switches, at least in the US. You just, you strip the wire a little bit and you stuff it in there and it stays, right? You cannot yank that thing back out. I love those connections. I would love to see those kinds of connections on here. You can get them back out. You can get the wire back out if you like stick a screwdriver down and you kind of depress um, something in a, in a little slot they give you and then you can pull the wire out. So it's not like it's impossible to ever get it back out um, without cutting it and just leaving it in there. But I think those kinds of connections are what we need to be using on this. Push fit. Thank you, Sam. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. Push fit. I would like to see more push fits. I was talking to Bruno about the BH on Ofri and saying that's the kind of connections I'd like to see on there. So if I were going to take, you know, because he, he, he can get the circuit board and all the parts and stuff um, and do the BH on Ofri yourself. Um, it's probably not an excessive amount of soldering. It's not going to be like this. This is pretty, this is pretty intricate. Uh, stuff here. So it's not this complicated. So it's something you could probably do if you've got moderate soldering skills. So I'd like to try it. And if I did, I would like to put those kinds of push fit um, connections on there. Cause I think that would be pretty cool. So, all right, let's see what else we got in the, in the chat. What do you guys, you guys have questions about this? I, I, I can't go through the, the, 
uh, DIY mode again because I already flashed both of these with Tasmoda. But like I said, I, I recorded it and I will be editing like a madman to try and get a video out in the next couple of days. What do you think? I've had, I put out four videos this week, right? I put out one, what was it, Saturday? And then Monday and Wednesday and today. Is that right? I think I did. I put out a lot of videos this week. A lot of videos. That's because I didn't put out any for a while because we had company. We were we were gone. And But I had all this footage and I had been editing it and finally just decided to lay it all on you this week. <laughs> in the UK, we call those three plate. Permanent live, neutral, switch live in the ceiling rows. Okay. Main difference in the US is the main wiring is in the walls and extends to the ceiling. In the Netherlands, all the main wiring is in the ceiling and drops down to extends to the walls. Yeah. You are right. I, we don't like to get up in our ceilings, I think, around here. And that's, I, I've been up there and I understand why it sucks. <laughs> it's hot and it's horrible up there most of the time. Uh, press connections are more for the fine cable and not always uh, keep solid one at place. Okay. Sonoff RF and all the motion sensors work great thanks to your video. Awesome, Johan. Thank you. I'm glad. Push fit is more expensive part and makes cost more. Okay, maybe true, Idaho. Maybe true. Are the terminal top exposure or have a cover? They don't have a cover, but they are recessed. So they, so these up here are not covered. No, they're not covered, but they are recessed. So you can see they're, you know, they're below the level quite a bit by a millimeter or more. And the same with these, same with these connections here. They're really sunken down in there. So it, unless you had like a stray wire, you know, if you had a, if you had a stranded wire and you let a, a, a filament out the side, then you could have a problem. And I've seen people that shorted out their Shelly's that way. They're, it's very just, it's in fact, well, they're not the same connections as the Shelly. I actually think these connections are probably a little better than these. These are the ones that I, I don't really like that they just kind of smash, you know, they, there's a screw behind there and then there's this little piece of tin here. And then as you twist it in, it just kind of smashes the wire. I just feel like these never really do a great job of, of holding the wire in. Or they certainly can, can have a, a problem holding the wire in. I'm just, I'm hoping that these will be a bit better the way that these squeeze up instead of just press down. So hopefully it it looks like it's going to be better. But yeah, they're not they're they're exposed. They're not covered on the top here. So if that's a problem for you, then miss the beginning. Which is this? Hey, Sachi, how's it going? This is the Sonoff Mini, my friend. My my Sonoff Minis. Oh no, this isn't. That's a Shelly too. This is the Sonoff Minis, <laughs> and they're and they're awesome. They're actually really good. So eight fifty is what they cost. You get a ten amp relay. Uh, most importantly, you get uh, switch pins. So switch in and switch out. So this is set up ready to go to be connected to an external switch. Um, when you go to Tasmoda, well, I put this on the video, but basically uh, this switch in is GPIO 4. It's GPIO 4. So this is uh, when you set up your Sonoff um, with Tasmoda, or you, we could, actually I should probably do it with ESP Home. Shoot, shouldn't I? I'll have to do that. I'll have to make an ESP Home sketch for this because it, it shouldn't be hard. Um, this is D0 still, but this is GPIO 4, ready to go to an external switch. Um, so it's pretty good. Downside, it's a, it's bigger than the Shelly. Only one relay. This is two. And no place to put sensors on this. I don't know. I guess in here. Well, this also has, you know, this also has uh, power monitoring, two-channel power monitoring. So you're getting a lot when you pay, you know, the 30 bucks for the Shelly 2. This doesn't have any of that. And I don't know that you can. Uh, maybe you could if this, I don't know, let's see, do the energy monitor sensors, the current sensors, do they use uh, a third wire? Do they need power? Or are they just GPIO and ground? They might just be GPIO and ground. I don't know. You guys tell me. Because if they are, then you might be able to put one of those on here. But this is the only real easy access you have to any kind of other pins, and that's GPIO 16 and ground. And then you can get to the RXTX 3 volts and ground on the back with some soldering skills. But All right. What's up? Greetings from Brazil. How's it going? One question. You have a new, uh, new brand Sonoff T1 3 gang with Tasmoda. It keeps rebooting. Five to seven times a day. Any ideas what's causing that? Dang. I don't know, Kevin. That uh, That's a bummer. What would be causing that? Most often, 
most often it's uh, a retain message problem. So uh, Rob, check out Rob's video. Rob did a video, gosh, it's probably been a year or more ago about retain. Basically, if you're running Tasmoda, set it to um, switch retain one and power retain one. And in Home Assistant, just set it to uh, retain false. And then you're, you're giving all of the responsibility for maintaining the state to Tasmoda. Um, and then usually when you, what's probably happening is it's disconnecting from the Wi-Fi. It's just briefly disconnecting and reconnecting. And when it does, it toggles. And if you don't want that to happen, then switch retain and power retain are usually the things to use. Yeah. <clears throat> Static buildup could be, it could be that too. Um, I, I would hope that in those you wouldn't get in a situation where you need like the low pass filter thing because they sh their, their switches should be, they shouldn't be allowing a lot of interference, but I don't, you know, it's hard to know. I think the most common problem and the most likely solution is bad Wi-Fi or, or, you know, sometimes it's just a box. I've got one box in my house that just happens to be next to, I don't know what else in the wall, something metal or whatever. And it, um, just gets a horrible connection. I don't know why. It's everything else about it is great. It's not even that far from the router. It's just that it's, it's just that it's uh, in a place where it doesn't get a good connection. So if you don't, if you're not getting a good connection, it's connecting and disconnecting and reconnecting from the Wi-Fi, then it's probably toggling when it does that. And, and if you'd use those retain commands in the right way, you should be able to fix that. All right, you can disconnect the switch LED and use that pin. Uh, yeah, you could, you could, but that wouldn't give you power. You could, let's see, the LEDs are right here. There's two LEDs. They're super hard to get to, though. One of them is, one of them is between, can you even see it? It's between this switch and the relay. That's one of them. That's one of the, that's the Wi-Fi one. So that's the blue one in there, right there. So good luck getting to that. I guess you could try and get to it from this side somehow. No. And then over here, this is, uh, looks like it says D7 relay. So this is the relay LED out here. So... Again, you can get to that, but you can't get power. Like we need three volts all the time. I guess maybe you could set D7 to just be on all the time. You could do that. And then it would technically be giving you three volts, right? If you just set it high all the time. So maybe that would work. Again, you'd have to solder something on here. I would just really love if they would just stick a three volt pin right there. Just give us a three volt pin, but whatever. It's cool. They're, they're making progress. It's not as much as... Um, not as much as we'd like, as fast as we'd like, but it never will be. <laughs> All right. Nice content. Thank you. Thanks for showing us the Sonoff Mini. I have one question about the switch connector when using the original firmware. Is it working with momentary push button only? Ooh, good question. Uh, it is working with latching. It, it works as a latching switch. So a rocker type switch. I don't know if you can change that. That's a good question. And now that I don't have that firmware anymore, I can't tell you. Uh, uh, so, um, Songor, Songor, Songor just did a video and he went through quite a bit of detail here. He went through quite a bit of detail. I like him. He's another guy I need to get on the stream sometime. Don't you think? Songor Varga. I haven't chatted with him in a while, but, um, he, he just did a video and he went through a lot of this. I didn't watch the whole thing. He went through a lot of the stuff for the, um, the stock firmware. He didn't change the firmware on the video that he put out. He, I think he did do it. He said he recorded some other footage, so he's going to do one as well, which would be great. There'll be plenty of us. But uh, um, I think he's. if there's a way to change that to a, a toggle or a push button, like a momentary type switch, he'll be able to tell you that uh, prob probably. If, he, if anybody went through it on a video, he did. Okay. It is in production. Some major firmware changes to the original firmware coming through. Awesome. Frank's going to make them right for the better. Awesome. 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 Yeah. And of course in Tasmodi, you can do it. You just change the switch mode. If you wanted to do a momentary button or uh, instead of a latching button, you can do that. No problem. So, so enough mini new product from it is this in production. It sure is Andy. It sure is. It is hard to get though. It's hard to get. I had to, I had to really, I had to really, uh, ask nicely to get two of these. So I got, uh, she was going to send me one. She's going to send me one months ago and wasn't, didn't, whatever. But just finally, I got them yesterday in the mail. Like I got home from work and they were here and I was like, oh, sweet. What is the black wire for? So m I think this is just an antenna extension. So this is just uh, to get the antenna away from some of these parts on the inside, I think. I think. 
So it's got a little piece of sticky, a double-sided stickiness here. So you can stick it somewhere like I'd maybe put it on the face plate or put it on the side of the on the side of the switch box or someplace where it's uh, a little further away from some of these these components in here to try and give you a better Wi-Fi connection. Yeah. Just bought two last week for seven euros each. That's right, Mizo. Yep, and then hopefully they'll come soon. She was she's like, oh, these are really hard to get. I, you know, oh, it's really I, you know you have to give me a really good reason why you need two. So I did. <laughs> amp rating on the relay, ten amps, Andy. Ten amps, my friend. Ten amps. What else we got? Are there some tutorials on soldering a Wi-Fi antenna to a Sonoff to get better reception? Good question, Bobby. I don't know. I um. You know what would be the thing to do? This is where I would start looking. The uh, the D1 Mini has a Pro version, and that Pro version has a, an antenna connected to it. Um, there's probably a schematic that would show us which pins we need to connect to, and then we would need to just find those pins on whatever ESP8266 board you're using and see if you can find... Uh, an access point for those pins and be able to solder to them. That's a good question. That's a good question. I, I've, um, since I changed my routers to Google instead of the, I had this big honking Netgear thing. Um, I definitely have lost a little range like outside of my house. So my garage door opener doesn't always open as fast when I get up close. So I would like to extend the antenna on that. Do I know this trig board? I've heard of the trig board. Just found it. it consumes almost no power whatsoever. I believe it to be great for home automation projects. Have a look at it. Thank you. Um, post. Can you post a link just so and then I'll I'll put it up here for everybody. I have seen the trig board. I've looked at the guy's website and stuff a few times, but I haven't um, I haven't touched one myself. Maybe I should get one. You're right. There are tutorials to solder a wire to extend the connectivity. There are. Okay, good. Um, I think for beginners or folks that have to put this up in the ceiling rows, uh, this is great. Otherwise, BHNO for your Shelly. Yep. I think Aza. I think you're right. I think um, if I was gonna get a bunch, I would. I, I, I still. I have to put the BHNO free through a few paces. I don't think it's been, you know, it's it's new, it's small as far as like what, how they're they're able to get them out. I I don't know what their production systems like. I looked went the went back to the website and it looked like they had less models available now than they did uh, a month ago. So maybe uh, I don't even, I don't even know. I mean, I've talked to Bruno a little bit, but I need to get Bruno on too and see um, get him talking about it what he's got planned. But I really like his layout. I like what he's done with giving us access to all the pins. Uh, smaller relays to me is fine. We two amp relays is fine most of the time. If you don't, if you want something more than two amps, then just use a different device. It's okay. But if you can use two amps, uh, two amp relays uh, to get them nice and small, make it um, fairly easy for somebody like us to get in there and solder together um, and then make it easy to put other sensors and stuff on. And it's a little bit cheaper than this. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, Shelly, if you don't want to mess with anything, you just want something that kind of just works. Shelly's the way to go. I definitely, definitely give Shelly big, big plus. Uh, the new tiny Pico board is going to be nice for sensors and home assistant. Ooh, I need to check out the tiny Pico board. Pins, which pins? Do you know what those two spaces below the ESP IC? Oh boy. What is this? Do you know what are those two spaces below the ESP IC? Donde? The ESP IC, is this the ESP IC right here? Do I know the two spaces below? Oh, these two right here? These two right here. Let me see what those say. I'm gonna get my old man specs on. I'm gonna look like my mom now. Let's see, this says, I can't, uh, looks like it says C19. It's going to the relay. It's probably something to do with the relay because if you look at the other side of the board where it's connected, it looks like it's right about there. So it's definitely under the relay. It's probably it's probably a control for the relay. I'd have to get the um, the multimeter and try and figure out where on the board one of those is going. Yeehaw! Thanks for subscribing or whatever it was. So I know I don't know what those are. They're not labeled very well. But we can poke around with the poke around with this and see, I guess. Oh, it probably, you know what, in Morse, it's probably, it might be blocking you if you're trying to do a link. 2.5 is dual width power monitoring, that's right. Can you give the camera those glasses? We don't see it either. Oh, 
Uh, yeah, zooming in on this camera is kind of a bummer. Let's see. All right, we can do this. We can do this. We have the technology. I can change this and make it so that it's a little bit closer on the focus. That's not it. There you go. How about that? Autofocus is a pain on these. Um, so I think the pins, I think he, what he was asking about is these two right here, these two contact points right here. And there's some labeling over here, C19, C25, something like that. And then if you flip that over, that's going to be right underneath the relay, probably right about the control pin on the bottom of the relay. So if I had to guess, I'd say that's, that's probably what that is. All right, what else? Mini is more compared to the Shelly 1, and the price is similar. Shelly 1, I think, yeah, yeah, you're probably right, Michael. I think you're. I think the Shelly 1 is still a little bit more expensive. And the Shelly 1, that's a good question. I, um, trying to think of other advantages of the Shelly 1. I can't remember if they had more accessible pins or not. Does anybody know? Like, I haven't been, I haven't tinkered around, but are these... Are these accessible pins for the for the Shelly too? Like I haven't stuck anything in there to see what that is. But is that are those something we could connect an external sensor to? Log and key look like they're for those pads. Oh, is that what it says? Does it say log and key? Oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying over here. Oh, okay. That how is that how the circuit boards are labeled usually? These would be go into that and line up with that. Okay, that makes sense. Log and key in. Hmm. I don't know what that would do. What do you think that would do? This is nine bucks. Channel Shelly 2 is 15 bucks a channel with monitoring. Yeah. Programming interface on the Shelly 2. Hey, Carrie, how's it going? Carrie's going to join us on the stream. Not today. I'm not going to put him on the spot like that, but we're going to have, we're going to have Carrie come on the stream. He's a very active Facebooker for those of you that are on Facebook a lot. Glad you're here, man. Shelly One has programming pins accessible as well. So that's great. So if these pins are accessible, boy, that'd be hard to get any kind of jumper in there maybe, but I'll try. R18, C19 are the resistor and capacitor right next to them. Okay, thank you, Dimitri. Sent you a link on Discord. Okay, thank you, Tim. Let's see what we got. Where is it, Tim? I don't see it. Don't see it. Are there any pads near the power converter that might supply three volts? Maybe. So I tried, what I did last night when I was trying was I, I poked around all the, what I felt like might be the easy accessible points. So like there's a little solder point here for this resistor. Excuse me. There's, um, well, what else did I try? I tried anything over here. Um, I don't know what else we might find. Let's see, where is the power converter? Maybe in here somewhere. So the thing to do might be to just poke around here. Oh, there it is. There you go. There's Tim's thing. What you got here? Oh, that's cool. That thing's pretty. Wow. Wi-Fi switch built in RGB dimmer light. Cool. That's pretty cool. And I bet you it runs on Tuya probably, right? Smart Life app or something. Does it say? I, oh yeah, Smart Life app. So it's Tuya. Oh, you guys can't see because the webcam. <laughs> Ha oh, ha ha. Very funny, Dr. Z's. Very funny. Yeah, this is cool. Check this out. This looks neat. I like it. it looks cool. This is just a, a, a light switch, but it's got um, RGB night light kind of thing on, on the face of it. So if you want a bright light, uh, this will do. And it's smart life, so it's to you. So cool. Thanks, Tim. Anybody want that link? If you guys want that link, I can pop it in. Uh, 
All right. <laughs> All right, let me see. I'm missing the chat now. What am I what am I seeing? Can you make a video on how much electricity it uses in idle mode and in connected mode? Are you talking about the basic or here, the mini? Uh I could probably try and uh do some power monitoring on it. Yeah, my guess is it'll be it'll be low. It'll be, it'll be similar. Are you thinking battery power or something? It's a new ESP module. Oh, really? Wait, what? What's a new ESP? And the chip is a new one. The chip in this is new? What chip is in this? So it's not 8266? Really? Have you already got one of these, Tim? Did you already pop this thing open? What chip is it? I think what we need too is something like the BH Onofre that is based on the ESP32. And then we could just, oh, it is 8266, okay. Does the Home Assistant Cloud make if this and that easier to use? No, Johan, I don't think it does. I think the um, Home Assistant Cloud makes Amazon Echo and Google Home easier to use. And it makes, and the best part is it makes remote access easy to use. So you can be anywhere and on your phone or on a laptop or anybody else's computer, you can easily, uh, access your home assistant because it gives you a nice, um, unique URL uh, to get access to. Oh, the 8285. The 8285 is not new. It's just 8285 versus 8266. The 8285 has the one megabyte of memory built in and the 8266, it's separate. So on some boards, um, the 8266 has more memory, right? Like a D1 mini or a Note MCU, they usually have four megabytes of memory where on the, um, on the uh, 8285, it's one megabyte and it's always gonna be one megabyte. In fact, I think this is 8285, if I recall. Once again, gotta get the glasses out. Oh, there you go. Frank says it does make if this and that easier since you don't need forwarding on ports. Oh, because of webhooks. Is that what is that what that is about? You're right, I'm so sorry. It will not be the last time I tell you the wrong thing. Look at this, I can't even see with these glasses. I gotta get these out. Yes, this is an 8285. So that doesn't mean anything other than it's got one megabyte and you can't change it. So some people in the past had changed the amount of memory on the Sonoff Basic. They put on their, um, you know, extra memory because uh, they wanted to load bigger firmware, but they didn't have to. Uh, on this, you can't. Sorry, on this, you can't. All right, <laughs> can I make a video? Got lots. Man, Manish has got lots of videos he wants me to make. Jeez. I think you need a microscope. I have a microscope. I never use it. <laughs> uh, on electricity consumption, this Sonoff device on stock firmware, what's the difference in consumption? Are you, what's the, what's your plan, Manish? Are you trying to battery power these? Because generally the, 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 bat, the, the power consumption for one of these 8266 chips is going to be pretty low. And I don't know, I mean, maybe it's going to be different from device to device, but not tremendously. Um, I mean, you're talking you know, milliamps or something like that. You want to, you want to battery power them. I can tell you that battery powering an 8266 is probably not ever going to be a good idea. The only, the way to do it is going to, the only way to do it successfully with a battery on one of these kinds of Wi-Fi chips is to use, um, like deep sleep mode and have it only wake up when you absolutely need it to, and then do its, do its deed and then go back off. Um, otherwise it's going to use too, too much power and your battery is not going to last very long. Um, I found that out the hard way. If you want battery, if you want something battery powered, then you probably want to do something different. Not, you don't want to battery power one of these most likely. What do you guys think about that? Is that, am I giving him good, good direction there? Um, I think some, something like Zigbee now that I've started using Zigbee, <laughs> thanks to Frank. I think Zigbee is a good battery option. Um, RF, like 433 megahertz stuff is a good battery, good battery option. But, um, yeah, 8266 devices like this, Wi-Fi device like this, not, not great for batteries. Not great unless you, unless you put them into deep sleep. Yeah. Zigbee works great on batteries. Trig board is the answer. You know, for, for the battery, what's the solution? 
Wi-Fi eats a lot of power. Will not work well on a battery. That's right. What camera are you using for the bench shots? It's a log it's the same webcam. It's a Logitech. It's a Logitech webcam. 922 or something like that. 920. Something like that. Wi-Fi burns through batteries like crazy. Yes, it does. Remember my I, I thought, oh, this is gonna be so great. I'm just gonna take a Sonoff uh basic, or no, it was a it was an SV, and I'm gonna connect it to a nine volt battery, and I'm gonna make a battery powered switch. This is gonna be great. You guys remember that video a couple years ago? <laughs> I thought, oh, this is awesome. Did all this filming, did it great. Okay, great. I uh left it overnight, came back the next day, dead. Well, why is the battery dead? Well, the battery's dead because uh it doesn't last very long. <laughs> That was a great video. It was funny. <laughs> the nine volt button. That's right. That was a fun video. It was fun because I, you know, we learned a lesson. I learned a lesson and it, it was great experimentation. Um, it was fun. Sparked the garage door idea. That's true. It did. Aza, yes, it did. Yes, it did. Um, all right. About 30 Sonoff POW 2 devices. Holy cow. And hooked them all up together. Power consumption was between 60 and 100 watts measured on one Sonoff. That sounds like a lot. That sounds like a lot, Ivo. You mean just the, just like when it's idling, when it's not connected to anything? Oh no, I guess, I guess that's right. No, maybe not. That sounds like a lot. That sounds like a lot. What's watts? <laughs> Can you guys hear the kids all screaming? This trig board is always in deep sleep and turns on when the switch or trigger is activated. Yep. In idle. Dang. That seems like a lot. But maybe that's uh maybe that's because of the POW. Maybe there's some maybe there's something with the POW that uh uses more power as well. Arduino programming for ESP8266 can get you pretty good life. However, never instant response. That's true. Two to four watts per device. Oh, okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. You had oh, okay, you had them all connected on a okay, I understand now. That makes more sense. I thought I, in my mind, you had 30 POW twos. You had 30 POW R twos and you were measuring and each one of them was like 60 to hundred Watts. I was like, Holy cow. <clears throat> I think I need a tour of your house. Oh, Hey Chris, how you doing, man? You need to come stay at my house, dude. Where you been? Where you been? 25 sewn off devices and your electricity bill increased by 20%. Ooh, no, that shouldn't be. That shouldn't be. Um, unless your electricity bill is really low to begin with. They certainly do take some power at idle, but it's minimal. I mean, it's it's minimal. Like he says, maybe two to four watts per device. I guess if you have 20 of them, 100 watts. So, I mean, a couple extra kilowatt hours maybe a day. I guess it could be. Stock firmware. You know what could be too, Manish, is with the stock firmware, they could be phoning home a lot. That might be extra power consumption. That's a good question. Uh, could do a NIAD battery with solar charging. That'd be nice. Have wall switches running off a uh, modified Xiaomi Zigbee boards running on button batteries. It'll last for a month, if not years. That's awesome, Bobby. That's awesome. Yeah, Zigbee stuff is good for battery for sure. I, I'm I'm very happy that I've started the, down the Zigbee road. I need to do a video about the the combi. So. All right, fellas, I wanted to do a, a short stream. Do you have any other questions about this for now? Any other any other things we, you want me to, to look at real quick on these? We could maybe do poke around the board a little bit more, but my my two oldest boys, you know, we've, we do lots of theater in this house, and my two oldest boys, Jackson and Zach, they are in Peter Pan, uh, and they're pirates, and uh, today's their last show. So we're going to leave for, to go watch their show in about... 15, 20 minutes. Anybody in Italy using stuff within the wall switches? ESP Home? All right. Oh, ESP Home on this. So we could do, you know what, uh, Aza? I'll, I'll do an ESP Home sketch for this. I don't. I totally will because it shouldn't be too much different than the Sonoff Basic. Um, I know what pins do what, so we should be able to, should be able to make that work. How to do the three-way. Oh, you know what's great? Here is how to do the three-way. It's on, oh, sorry, that was my multimeter. Uh, Sonoff, if you go to their website, which I'll let you see, if you go to their website and you look at their, look for their mini, actually this is not the right one. 
you go to the mini, which is down here somewhere, right there, go to the mini and scroll down here and it actually shows you, here you go. This is how you wire it up. Can you, let's see if I can, how do I zoom in on this? Do, 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 do. Come on, stinker. Can't really zoom in much better than that, can I? Oh, I can do this, right? Yeah, oh, okay, there you go. So this is how you would wire up a three-way. Now the, the trick is you need to have power coming in at the same place where the light is going out. But if you have that situation, then basically you just tap into one line from your two-way switches already and you connect those to the S1 and S2. So your line in, neutral in, and then here's neutral again, and line out to the lights, okay? Power out to the lights. So that's how you connect it to the light. And then if you already have your three-way switches installed, this part should be fine. And then you can just take uh, what was probably connected to, I'm guessing that might've been what was connected to these, and you put them here. So anyways, they give it to you on your, they give it to you here, you, a wiring diagram you can follow. It's gonna depend on how you're, you know, what you see when you open up your switches. Unfortunately, sometimes if the load is down here, like the light is down here and the power comes in up here, then you may be not able to do it as easily. You may have a little more trouble. Um, all right, you have to have the wires going to both switches available to the mini. Three-way wiring is not compatible with the way existing switches are wired. Oh, really? This kind of three-way thing, Kel uh, Gary? This kind? I, I don't know that I have any that are like this, unfortunately. I'm going to find out. I, it seems to me that when I've gotten into most of my three-way switches like this, the power comes in one side and the light is connected to the other side. So it, this doesn't work in that scenario. If there's a way to make it work, I'd like to know. But at least in the US. Maybe maybe you guys that aren't in the US, you get you have something different to deal with. All right. Just watch a DIY shades video. If you're going if you're doing a wider window, would you use three quarter inch PVC pipe for the shade? So Mark, um the top one I think uh one inch is still gonna be I mean you wouldn't go to wouldn't go smaller if you were gonna use a smaller one. So here's what you need to do. Mark the best thing to do with to decide that go to the go to the hardware store get a go to go to where they have their PVC pipe get a PVC pipe figure out about how long you want it to be and see if when you hold it at one end if it just flexes because <laughs> if it does then you need something different so for me the one inch schedule 40 spanned gosh 56 inches 57 inches I think it was um, that those windows are wide so that was fine uh, the part across the bottom I would still use three uh, half inch, sorry. I know I said three quarter inch in the video, but I actually should have said half inch because that's what I actually used. So half inch, the part at the bottom is really just, it could be really light. It doesn't have to be very heavy. It's just there to kind of keep this the shade from starting to bunch up in one direction or another. And then it also gives you something that's got some weight to it to hit the uh, sensor at the bottom when you get there. So I think if I was gonna use a longer window, um, I would still use one inch across the top until, you know, you might get to a point where one inch is too flimsy as well. And then you'd have to go bigger, you know, one and a half or something like that. Two minis. Do what DigiBlur recommends. Set up two minis, one on each side, but only one turns on the light and the other tells the first one to turn off the light. Yeah, that, that was how I did my very first one too, Joe. I, I, the very first three-way switch I did, I just put a Sonoff Basic in each, in each wall. And what I... I used the existing wiring to run power to each of those Sonoff basics. Um, so one Sonoff basic got the first bit of power and then I just connected it to the wires that were going, that were the three-way wires before to the other switches, put a Sonoff basic that was just powered in those. And then uh, one of them was connected to the lights and all of them just tell the one that's connected to the light what to do. So same thing. And that's what we'll have to do. In India, it's the same way as shown in the Sonoff site for three-way switch. Okay, good. Good. So there you go, Manish. You can use this. You can use a, a Sonoff Mini for this. 
put metal conduit in the PVC to make it stiffer. Yeah. You know, I used metal on the first one. I used three quarter inch metal conduit on the first one. Um, and it was good. It just was harder to work with. I liked working with PVC, uh, when I did it over again, um, getting that bearing in there, right. And some of those things were just easier, but yeah, totally, totally three quarter inch metal conduit is not going to bend. You can probably be 10 feet long and you're not going to bend, uh, any appreciable amount. So just added another button to an existing Sonoff that connects via MQTT to another Sonoff. Exactly right. That's a good, that's a good way to do it too. Have I done the single press, double press on Tasmoda? Oh, uh, have I? I haven't really messed with that. I know, I know you can. I just kind of moved already to ESP home before I started tinkering with that. As I've done that, I've definitely done that with ESP home. Oh, Hey, I just got a notification from if this, then that, that I started streaming. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. Anything else, fellas? Anything else? Thanks for, thanks for being here. I know this is kind of a funny time, middle of the day. A lot of you guys are probably at work. Oh, I guess maybe in the UK, this is a good time. Um, yeah, I would go to, I would ask, um, if you had questions about the single press, double press and those kinds of things on Tasmoda, um, Digi Blurs, he's a champ. He's a stud when it comes to that stuff. He knows it better than I do for sure. 4 a.m. in Australia night shift. And that's why you're, is that why you're called night shift? <laughs> Cause you're up at 4 a.m. Uh, double turns on the fan and hold turns off the downstairs. Oh, you know what I did use? I did use hold in the past. I did use hold in the past. Straight a stream while I'm at work. <laughs> 2 p.m. in Chile. Uh, yeah, I know, Joe. Uh, it was pretty sad. I was happy I got to know him. He was an amazing dude. Amazing dude. So, thanks for the imp on the minis. Looking for this stream. Oh, good. Well, now it's time for bed. Manish, now you can go to bed. Um, should we do... Uh, we'll, we, we'll skip stickers today. We'll skip stickers today. Um, but uh, the wife is not happy. Oh, no. S I saw his and did try long press and short press and messed up the kitchen lights. Oh, no. No, don't mess up the kitchen lights. Put it back, Tim, quick. Put it back as quick as you can. Uh, should I get the kids up here for sign off at least? Maybe we should do that. Why are you Netherlandals still using switches? <laughs> um, Alexa, tell everyone it's time for sign off. We've got a bunch of extra kids in the house today. Super loud. They probably didn't even know I was streaming. <laughs> They're going to come up stampeding like crazy right now. It's going to get loud, guys. It's going to get loud. I'm going to move the mic away a little bit. What would you say is your top three favorite uses for a Sonoff and home automation? Uh, definitely light switch, um, garage door, and I know I figured that was going to happen. <laughs> let's see if we can, let's see if we can make it. Hi, you. Let's see if we can make it bigger for everybody because I know you guys would like to be see yourselves, right? By yourselves. Uh, let's see. We can do this. Uh, here we're gonna just turn off all this so we're just gonna see everything oops oops now we only can see holly oops now we can't see anything <laughs> hello come on get out of the way i can't why can't i make it move anymore oh i locked it that's why wait 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 it's locked now okay there we go now we Yay. got everybody Holy smokes. Look at this. Look at this group. Um, all right. Sorry about that night shift. <laughs> Got the, These kids are neighbors. These kids are all the way from New York. They live in upstate New York, Rochester area, right? Okay. So what are we going to say? How are we going to do it? New York style. Because Pick. No, British. So we have to do some kind of funny thing. You want to? Okay. All right. British. Britain accent. It's going to be... Hearing, hearing me do it, it's going to be horrible. Okay. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? So this is what we say. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time, adios. Okay? And you say it as Britishly as you can. Okay, ready? Thanks for watching. Until next time, adios. <laughs> okay. I'm not good. Have a good one, guys. Thanks for being here. Take care. We'll see you on Sunday. Frank, heal up that back, my friend. Say in Hindi. Ooh, Manish, you got to tell me how to say it. You got to send me the translation, and then we'll we'll do that. Oh, Shub? 
Ratri. Shubratri. All right. I like it. All right, guys. Have a good one. See you.